As the world was in a celebratory mood welcoming the new year 2023, the death of two Nepali nationals abroad has once again highlighted the risks involved in employment opportunities in foreign land. Serious questions have now been raised on the initiative taken by foreign embassies in such cases, while the government back home has also remained a silent spectator in minimizing such unfortunate deaths of Nepali nationals abroad. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. UML to stake claim for the government formation and the position of Chief Minister this Friday in Province 1. First meeting of Provincial Assembly other than Province 1 being conducted today. An alarming number of Nepali nationals trapped by human traffickers. At least 10 unsuspecting Nepali nationals killed in Panama Forest. The government remains a silent spectator. Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, sworn in as Brazil's new president, vows a drastic change, of course, to rescue a nation plagued by hunger, poverty and racism. And Brazil races for the final rights of Pele. The death of the legendary football Pele unifies Brazil, a country starkly divided by a bruising presidential election. CPN Unified Socialist has called the Politburo meeting after the party's standing committee meeting failed to make a decision on whether to join the government or not. Discussions during the party's Politburo meeting that will begin in a short while at the party office in the capital's Alok Nagar is set to dwell on whether to join the government or not. The Politburo meeting has been called as the leaders have been divided over supporting the Mao Center Chair Pushpakamal Dahal led government. The Politburo meeting is set to make a decision in this regard after grasping the views of the leaders. Party Chair Madhav Kumar Nepal has been holding dialogues with leaders of his parties across the country following the party's poor performance during the November 20th election. Jata Samajwadi Party that has lent its support to the government has called a meeting of the political committee to make a decision on joining the government. The meeting that, has, that is set to continue for two days will decide if they will only extend the support or join the government. The party spokesperson Manish Suman said the meeting of the political committee that will be held in Lalitpur will discuss contemporary political issues election review and formation of policy draft committee, among other issues. Janata Samajwadi, that has made its claims for three ministerial berths in the centre, has also been claiming the position of chief minister in Madesh province. The party is set to discuss its agendas for the government's common minimum programme, including constitution amendment, citizenship issue and resetting the election constituencies. The Central Committee meeting held on Saturday, had decided to maintain their stance on the demands previously made by the party. Province 1 Chief Parshuram Kapung has called the parties for the formation of the new provincial government. Meanwhile, CPN UML has staked the claim for the government formation and for the position of the Chief Minister in Province 1. Provincial Chief Kapung has moved sub-Article 2 of Article 168 of the Constitution calling on the lawmakers to stake their claim for the position of the Chief Ministers with the support of two or more parties. Province Chief Kapung has given a deadline till next Sunday, 8th of January, for the formation of the new government alongside the claim for the Chief Minister. The CPN-UML-led coalition has the majority in Province 1, with UML's 40 seats, Mao Center's 13, RPP's 6, and Jata Samajwadi Party's 1 lawmaker. The first House session of Province 1 also convened yesterday. The Parliament Secretariat has started the process of electing the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker from the first meeting of the House of Representatives summoned for next Monday, 9th of January. The Secretariat is unveiling the schedule of lawmakers addressing the first session of the House of Representatives, while the election date of the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker will be announced on the first day itself. 
In the absence of work management consultation committee of the parliament, the political parties represented in the lower house will finalize the agendas through an all-party meeting. An agenda on endorsing the previous parliament regulation or forming a new one will also be tabled while the first session itself needs to endorse the parliament regulation. Since the speaker and the deputy speaker need to be formed from different parties and gender, the election on these two positions have to be conducted on separate days. The newly elected provincial lawmakers from Lumini province were administered their oath of office and secrecy. Chief of the province, Amik Sechan, administered the oath of office and secrecy to all the elected lawmakers from Lumini province. The oath-taking ceremony was hosted in Rati's newly constructed Provincial Assembly House. The first session of Lumini Province has been scheduled from today. The 87-member Lumini Province has 29 lawmakers from CPNUML, 27 from Nepali Congress and 9 from Mao Center. Likewise, RPP and Nagvik Unmukti Party have 4 lawmakers each, 3 each from Janamat Party and independent candidates alongside 1 lawmaker from Unified Socialist and Jan Rashtriya Janamorcha. The oath-taking ceremony was timed just a day ahead of the House session that convenes from today. Meanwhile, the first meeting of the Madesh province, Kandaki province, Karnali, Sudur Pashim, and Bagmati is being held today. The disputes have escalated in Nepali Congress, the largest party in the parliament, but ironically out of the government. The two factions in the party led by Sher Bahadur Deuba and Shekhar Koirala have intensified their internal meetings regarding their forthcoming strategy for the Central Committee meeting scheduled for 6th January at the end of this week. A heated Central Committee meeting has been expected with demands for party president Sher Bahadur Deuba's resignation to the holding of statute convention. With Nepali Congress out of the government following some dramatic turn of events, the Shekhar Koirala faction is trying to build some pressure on the leadership faction, which is likely to take some defensive approaches. The party leaders now sorely divided over the debacle, which pushes, pushed them out of the government, will come face to face on Friday's Central Committee meeting. Even as the meeting is set to review the party's performance in the November 20th elections, the Koirala faction is bound to query the leadership regarding the validity of the pre-poll alliance and why is the party out of the government despite being the largest force in the parliament. The leadership faction that is in the back foot has been trying to save face by citing that office bearers along with the party president Deuba are equally responsible for the turn of events. The leadership faction, meanwhile, does not seem positive on the demand of the statute convention as demanded by Korala panel and the party. The 14th General Convention last year had elected the new leadership. However, the convention had failed to discuss the party policies. At the time, it was said that a policy convention would be organized within six months, which never materialized. The Pokhara International Airport, a four-decade-long dream of Pokhara residents and the third international airport of the country, has come into operation from yesterday. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal officially inaugurated the Pokhara International Airport on New Year's Day yesterday to send a message of tourism promotion in Nepal. More than 3,000 dropanis of land acquisition was done in Pokhara 40 years ago to construct the airport. The then Zonal Commissioner Shankar Raj Patak, who envisioned of building the international airport and initiated the land acquisition process, was felicitated at the inauguration program. Prior to the inauguration of the Pokhara International Airport, rallies including cultural parades of indigenous nationalities were taken out from Amar Singh Chok to the international airport. The airport, which expands at an area of 200 hectares, was built with Chinese loan of around 22 billion rupees. The airport's runway has a length of 2,500 meters and width of 45 meters. China's CAMC engineering company had started the construction of the international airport from 11th of August 2017. On the occasion of the inauguration of the international airport, Pokhara Metropolitan City had announced a public holiday in Pokhara yesterday. There is no alternative to going abroad for employment opportunities in the absence of jobs back home in Nepal. 
The number of countries for which the government has given green nod for foreign employment stands at 111. However, the government has never exhibited desired interest in the welfare of its nationals who sweat it out in foreign lands. In the meantime, an alarming number of Nepali nationals are also trapped by human traffickers, which at times leads to these unsuspecting people losing their lives. A Nepali national, Nirakar Pandey, was killed last week in Cambodia when Grand Diamond Hotel caught fire. Pandey, who was an export-import business person, had arrived in Thailand on 7th of December. It is still unclear why Pandey had visited Cambodia and the casino. Pandey was trapped in the hotel fire for some five hours as he awaited rescue efforts, which did not arrive in time. He even video called his family members to say final goodbye. Likewise, death of 20-year-old Madan Shahi from Rukum has also been reported yesterday. Shahi had dreams of landing in the U.S. as he used an illegal route through Panama. Even as the two incidents were distant apart and of differing nature, the common point was how Nepali nationals are losing their precious lives abroad. The probe carried out by Anti-Human Trafficking Investigation Bureau has revealed alarming scenario. At least 10 people have died as they were trapped by human traffickers in the past 12 months. Most of them were killed in the forested area of Panama. These unsuspecting individuals pay up to 6 million rupees to enter the U.S., making risky routes through India, Russia, Spain, Bolivia, Peru and then Panama. Investigations have also revealed that the Southeast nations in recent time have become another dangerous destination. There are human traffickers who are trying to take Nepali nationals to destinations such as Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos and Vietnam as they are forced to take up illegal jobs. Nepal police last week lodged cases against two Chinese nationals. It has also been revealed that the Nepalese embassies in these foreign countries have done minimal in crisis situations and neither has the government of Nepal taken any initiatives to save the life of its citizens trapped in foreign countries. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. बारी को समझौता आ सकते हो समझौता में काम सपनों पर सब बने जिम्मेवारी को के को ठेकदार जो खाले बड़ी दियो बने काम समय में संपन्न होने सक सभी दाल मिल रहा सभी पैटी मिल रहा सभी ले ऐसे कर रहा कि सपनों पर मैं हम देख सकूं प्राविधिक रूप में पूरा उन्हें नशा के का बीसे रुको कठिनाई लाइस समाधान करने पर सा ठेका नीति से पहले आप वाला मन करने पर बजट समय में भी नियोजन करने समय में काम करने तो ठीक दर कंपनी आ रही है बनी समय में गुणस्तरी काम करना पड़ेगा ये तो दारू का देखा होगा इंडिया लेवल में तबे को शामिल तो बनाया रहा तबे को चाहे इसको अब निग्रानी है ना अनुगमन अलग ही प्रभावकारी बनाने पर नहीं होन्सर Luis Inácio Lula da Silva was sworn in as Brazil's president, delivering a searing in indictment of far-right former leader Jair Bolsonaro and vowing a drastic change of course to rescue a nation plagued by hunger, poverty and racism. In a speech to Congress after officially taking the reins of Latin America's biggest country, the leftist president said democracy was the true winner of the October presidential vote when he ousted Bolsonaro in the most fraught election for a generation. Bolsonaro, who left Brazil for the United States on Friday after refusing to concede defeat, rattled the cages of Brazil's young democracy with baseless claims of electoral weakness that birthed a violent movement of election deniers. Lula, who was behind bars during Bolsonaro's 2019 inauguration on draft convictions that were later overturned, delivered a wild threat to his predecessor. Although Bolsonaro's Florida trip insulates him from any immediate legal jeopardy in Brazil, he now faces mounting judicial risks related to his anti-democratic rhetoric and his pandemic handling after losing his presidential immunity. He also accused Bolsonaro's administration of committing genocide by failing to respond properly to the COVID-19 virus that killed more than 680,000 Brazilians. 
Lula's plans for a government provided a stark contrast to Bolsonaro's four years in office, which were characterized by backsliding on environmental protections in the Amazon rainforest, loser gun laws and weaker protections for indigenous people and minorities. In his first decisions as president, Lula restored the authority of the government's environmental protection agency, Obama, to combat illegal deforestation, which had been diluted by Bolsonaro and revoked a measure that encouraged illegal mining on protected indigenous lands. Heavy rain on the northern California city of Placerville left flooded roads and a trail of mud and debris on the New Year's Day. Rain is expected for the area throughout today and according to the National Weather Service, a new precipitation amounts could reach between a tenth and half of an inch. The county of El Dorado had placed evacuation warnings on several locations due to flooding, but all were lifted as of Sunday afternoon. Up next is the weather update. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. UML to stake claim for the government formation and the position of Chief Minister this Friday in Province 1. First meeting of Provincial Assembly other than Province 1 being conducted today. An alarming number of Nepali nationals trapped by human traffickers. At least 10 unsuspecting Nepali nationals killed in Panama forest. The government remains a silent spectator. Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, sworn in as Brazil's new president, vows a drastic change of course to rescue a nation plagued by hunger, poverty and racism. And Brazil braces for the final rights of legendary football Pele. The passing away of Pele unifies Brazil, a country starkly divided by a bruising presidential election. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.